AI craze is in full swing, new models launching one after another, research papers flooding in, your newsfeed exploding, GPUs as scarce as shovels during the gold rush, and you still fool yourself that you'll catch up on all of it. We've already seen the rays of AI, but the rays of AI is a service? What is it and why should you care? To answer these questions, we need to understand how things used to be in the past and what factors allowed this trend to emerge. 2023 might have been the year of the rabbit in Chinese culture, but in the tech culture, it sure will be remembered as the year of the large language models. Actually, the number of times large language model was in the title of a research paper increased over 21 times, from 0.4 to over 8 since ChatGPT was made public in 2022. And I won't even attempt to guess how many times large language models was mentioned in a LinkedIn post. And I absolutely won't try to count how many times ChatGPT died this year. How we perceive adopting AI in business took a rapid turn from a nice to have to an absolute necessity for businesses to integrate to stay afloat. AI is truly experiencing its internet moment right now. How did we get here? Let's talk history for a bit. AI is everywhere and we owe this AI proliferation largely to major developmental milestones being reached in the world of generative AI. The models got bigger, which means they got better which means they got more knowledgeable and capable in general. Instead of just being able to expertly learn one specific task, they became generalists. And they do it very well. But being a generalist isn't enough if you want to use it for your specific business use case. Customization has always been around because we always have our own specific business needs. But how we achieve customization differs from the way we achieved it in the past. In the good old days, two years ago, customize a model for your particular use case, say to build a dog detector, the only option you had was to take a model which is good at a general task, such as recognizing objects and images, gather some data specific to your use case, which is a lot of pictures of dogs, and then teach the model what a dog looks like. You use it and boom, you have your custom AI with great return on investment. Well, that's the optimistic scenario. In a more realistic case, the time spent between deciding to experiment with AI in your business and return on investment is usually counted in months, with possibly many iterations of the data and the algorithm before reaching any reasonable output. Companies just experimenting with AI and where AI is not at the epicenter of the product, this is usually too big of a time and money investment to make for something that may or may not end up source of revenue. That's why the number of companies who experiment with AI adoption was substantially lower and just boom now. But why the boom? The FOMO effect. Yeah, it definitely played some part in it, but there's another perhaps more important reason. As the models got bigger, they also got more knowledgeable and capable in general, and so a brand new technique emerged on the horizon. In-context learning. In-context learning allows to create customized model behavior using natural language prompts. You simply tell your AI in your own words any relevant information you expect it to do, such as I have these examples of news headlines, generate 10 similar ones. This new technique in context learning turned out to be very successful. This means that you don't need to do anything to the model to get good results anymore. Now, if you don't need to do anything to the model, then you don't need to have your own copy of the model. If you don't need your own copy of a model and you just want to play around with AI because it just got good, you're probably on the lookout for someone who will host the model and provide it to you as a service. And AI as a service fills exactly that niche in the market. It makes AI plug and playable. Is that actually a word? Anyway. It allows more businesses to experiment, significantly shortens the path to initial return on investment, and removes the need to invest excessive amounts of time and money. How? By commoditizing AI models and tools and providing them to you as a service. So. So you communicate with the service while someone else takes care of the AI infrastructure for you. It's like hiring an accountant for your company so you don't have to get into the nitty gritty of the tax laws. And who's the accountant here? Well, for example, this video is not sponsored. Together AI. This company gives AI its Linux moment by providing an open ecosystem across compute and foundation models. Founded in June 2022 by four techpreneurs and computer scientists, just in May 2023, they raised a 20 million seed round and only six months later, they announced their second fundraise of 102 and a half million, welcoming top investors on board, such as Kleiner Perkins or Nvidia. Numerous great companies use their service, such as Pika Labs. This company lets you create these incredible videos from a text prompt. They solve the following problems. In contrast to building and maintaining your own AI infrastructure, AI as a service allows you to switch fast between vendors and models and choose the best option for your business. 
All of the APIs provide payment options as you go and very easy integrations. So you can try multiple options with minimal effort. And then you don't have to pull all of your eggs in one AI basket and build, for example, effective fallback chains that guarantee service continuity to your product all the time. The second one is that they give access to new models. New stuff comes out every day and that way you have access to all of it. Third one is cost efficiency. It's much cheaper to use an API than to host the model yourself, especially if you don't have millions of requests per day. Let's do some math here. ChatGPT API is priced by usage and it costs $0.02 for 1,000 tokens, which are parts of words used by LLMs for processing. A standard page of text contains about 500 words, which can be converted to roughly 670 tokens. Given the current cost per token, generating 1,000 pages of output of text, for example, would cost you $1.3, which is quite accessible even for a small business. Now, say you want to generate that 1,000 pages every day then your average cost would be a little less than $500 per year. If on the other hand, you decide to host a large language model, you'll pay hosting and hourly cost to a cloud service provider like AWS, which according to their pricing would amount to a yearly cost of roughly $20,000. We'll get back to that point in a moment to show you how cost efficiency can become a cost inefficiency and therefore a disadvantage for some. But for now, let's move on to the fourth aspect, the ease of integration and robustness. To use a model you host, you'll have to build an API yourself anyway and maintain the model. AI as a service APIs are designed to be easily integrated into existing applications and systems. This can save your time and resources compared to developing and maintaining your own AI models. Let's move on to the fifth aspect, scalability and speed. Companies providing API access to AI models focus solely on providing API access to AI models. So their main goal is to make their product as scalable and as fast as possible, attracting the most traffic. Solving people's problems can bring you money. And it indeed brought a lot of money in case of Together AI. So how do they do this? Well, they host open source models on their own GPU clusters which means that they don't incur the cost of developing the model themselves and instead make money by hosting them on clusters and letting people use them. Sounds like a dream. You may rightfully ask, what are the drawbacks here? What is an advantage can sometimes also be a disadvantage, like dependency. Don't build it yourself, so you need to rely on an external service, which means that your application's performance is dependent on the availability and reliability of the AI as a service provider. If the service experiences downtime or disruptions, it may impact your application. Second thing is data privacy. When using AI as a service APIs, your data is processed externally, which may raise concerns about data privacy and security. And yeah, data privacy is a huge topic in AI right now. The process of training LMs is controversial in itself, but you need to be double cautious if you work in sensitive industries like financial or medical services and you process your customers' data. Next up, we have customization limitations. While AI as a service APIs offer pre-trained models for various tasks, they might not perfectly align with your specific requirements. If your use case demands highly customized models, for example, you edit architectures to build something, building and training your own AI models may be the better option. The fourth disadvantage might be long-term costs. Again, the pay-as-you-go pricing model may be very cost-efficient for many, probably most businesses, but if you have a lot of traffic, it may end up costing you more. Let's now assume your needs are much bigger than that and you generate 1 million pages a day. This quickly raises to $1,300 day, which means that by the end of the year, you'll pay almost half a million dollars, which is quite inaccessible for most businesses and very cost inefficient. That case, hosting your model yourself on a cloud instance will be significantly cheaper. So AI is still in its infancy and the technology still remains expensive, but historically technology doesn't stay that way. And we can already see that it has become cheaper, both in terms of money and computation. As AI matures, we may experience that the benefits such as privacy, customization, and no dependency just outweigh the benefits of AI as a service. On the other hand, as AI becomes omnipresent in businesses, we might just experience AI as a service becoming the conventional way to use AI, letting dedicated companies do the dirty work for us while we focus on our specific use case. I'll refrain from making predictions because it's too much of a gamble, but it definitely shouldn't withhold you from starting experimenting with AI. AI as a service companies are great for it and significantly lower the barrier of entry. Take advantage and go exploring. And if you're thinking about fine tuning your own models, check if it won't be an overkill for you by watching this video. <laughs>